30, 70 being execution. And, uh, you know, if you see some nice people here. Although, it is something of note to... I'll, I'll say this to Aldrich, because this is his background. It's like trying to be, like, an elf in Sylphwall. Like, you're a bit dumb to be an elf and live in Sylphwall. Because they don't like you. So it's sort of like the same deal here of the twins of, you're a bit dumb if you're a mage and you stay in the twins. Most people that are mages and stay in the twins tend to be here for some criminal purpose. So it sort of just doubles the nails on their coffin when they get caught. Like myself. Like yourself. So, yeah, like, it's a bit of an unfair statistic. Like, it's not like, yeah. So maybe, maybe it's just that the twins is relatively fair, but just that you have an unfair sample size. That's, uh, the economist me speaking. Anyways, though, you get cleared through. Again, the people of Tiramar find no problem with the bodies hanging from their gates, nor the ones hanging from the noble district when you guys get there. Ow. Unless you guys wanted to, I should ask, though. Are you guys going directly to High Captain Arnold, or are you guys, like, doing something else on the way up? Yeah, we're gonna go shopping. No. No, I don't go. fucking know, okay? I, I don't know. know. I was expecting you to, like, spend a bunch of time on a damn bird, but here you are. <laughs> Fair point. You know what? Fair go. enough. I think we should the, probably uh, go tell. Yeah, yeah really? get rid of this bird before it dies. Tend to shack. Yeah, but well, shouldn't we just go straight to the captain then? And get well, the hotel's like right <laughs> next to the nobles' district, so <laughs> you're going the same way for both of these objectives. Let's just yeah. Let's get let's get this shit done. I yeah, say. let's handle our problem. Let's and, do our shit. Cause like we show up to Connor and be like, "Hey, we're almost done. Don't worry." He's probably gonna be like, "Why the fuck are you here? Go fix it." <laughs> not not gonna lie, I have it in my notes where if you guys visit Connor first, he would actually just say, "Why are you here?" <laughs> not perfect. <laughs> so you figured his his response out perfectly. Puzzle. <laughs> you figured out perfectly. He'd be like, "Wait, why are you here?" <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I solved the Connor puzzle. Yep. <laughs> Let's go to, to the Arnold. Yeah, so it's at it's night at this point. So now, by the time it takes you to travel through town, it is definitely sunset. Which is a pretty nice visage from the top of this, you know, cresting cliff area over the, the Stonecrest Lake and stuff like that. Uh, here at the, not at the Nobles District. Yeah, top just yet, but, you know, at the hotel and going up to the Nobles District. Pretty close. It's a nice view. It's a nice view, definitely. This place has its perks. As long as you're not mage. <laughs> It's like the Roaring Twenties, as long as you're only white. Anyways. And not a woman. So. <laughs> anyway. Uh, you guys pull up to the Noble District uh, gate, singular. Uh, some of you are much more familiar with this gate than others. And uh, two guards, one of which is familiar, the female guard from before. You figure that, you know, rotations are rotations. And you guys seem to come here at night, which seems to be where her shift is. And she just sort of sees you, and she says, she shouts something to the other guard. Like she sees her from way off, because again, there's something of a clear divide from Nova District Gates to the rest of the town. You shot something to the other guard, and then begins walking up as you guys are coasting up on your horses and wagons and things like that. You're for the captain, then? Yes. You'll have to disembark this, and she uses like the point of her uh, spear to like, gesture this to the wagon and everything. We have some... Evidence here that sure. we need to pre present. So if you could have someone come and help us carry it in. Cause... How big is it? Um, why don't you come take a look? There's arrows and there's this almost dead bird. <laughs> like the arrows, she just like examines them and she's like, she, to her they look like normal arrows. But then she sees the bird, she's like, what in the gods' name is... Don't ask questions you don't want to know the answer to on that one. <laughs> Well, I sort of have to... Uh, I don't get paid enough for this. Traumatized right? bird. <laughs> Just go with that. Whatever. Poop Whatever. Brain bird. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not getting paid to write a report. Not yet, at least. Just... Wait here. I'll just go get the captain. Mm-hmm. So she walks into the Nova District itself, and just sort of leaves this other guard. And she just, and he just like just started just watching all of you very warily. And he hears like the birds squawking madly from the back of your wagon. And he's just like really even more wary, but now also confused. Shh, 
This does not calm the bird, does it? <laughs> well, no, he doesn't see the bird. He just hears it from the wagon. <gasps> Pooh bird. It's like, like seven or so minutes passed. And then uh, the guard, she comes back out and uh, following the high captain Arnold. Still prim and proper and dry looking. Dry look? Oh. It's a very stoic man. Gotcha. So he comes out on his cross behind his back as he's walking up. The first thing I do is hand him the report I wrote. He opens up. Begins reading it. You see, like, stoic as he is, he does get visible signs of concern, curiosity, intrigue, annoyance. But by the end of it, he sort of cleans his face and just sort of makes it stoic and straight set. He then folds up the letter and sticks it into uh, his, uh, one of his uh, officer jacket pockets on his person. Might I see this survivor? I see gesture at the wagon. And he walks, goes around, looks at the bird, which is again freaking out in its cage. Yep. <sighs> Just pinches the bridge of his uh, nose. Yep. Adventurers, be frank with me. What are your thoughts on the matter? Off the record. You have a very powerful Nevros entity that's sort of kind of half myth, half reality, who is targeting this place for some reason. I do not know. Cut above. <laughs> I'm not a fool. I'm not going to send more men to these places just for them to die. Do you believe that they're safe? Your answer could mean the lives of some fathers, sons, daughters, mothers. I think they are as safe as they were before we went. No, Discord! Man, this one has a really good way of timing. So, what do you say to him? Because I didn't hear any of it. I think they are as safe as we can make them, as safe as, as, safe as they ever were. If this has happened once, it can happen again. At least now we've cleared them out. Cleaned up the magic. That doesn't mean it won't strike one more time. To me, this seems more... No one would go through this if they're... If this, if the, if they didn't want to send a message. If, why go through all the fanfare? Um, a message was certainly sent in more ways than one. <sighs> This is a different matter at this point. Very well. Yeah. The members who are set the last one. Beg pardon? Yes, they, whoever it was left an ambush for whoever was supposed to come there. The shadowy creatures mentioned in your report. He looks at you, Indeed. That was the only time of any ambush? Yes? Yes. Uh, unless you count the abomination... But it was immobile. It was and that one was more for visual representation than actual combat. Right. Very well. 
Your matter, your look into this matter is appreciated. And then not be said, I'm not a man of some merits. You. And he looks at you, Chenmer, and points at you. Come with me. She follows. Like, there's no fucking hesitation. It's like, yep. Just hands the bird off to, like, to fucking a guard. <laughs> yeah, the, the guard, the wary guard, that like he's, he was brought over and just sort of given this bird, and he's just really uncomfortable with it. It's it looks bit. like it's on fucking death's door, <laughs> and it looks like it's trying to expedite its, time, its way towards it. I had to deal with it all day. It's his problem now. Bye. <laughs> Uh, the female guard takes the uh, arrows that you guys recovered from uh, Pincushion Boy. <laughs> Sonic. <laughs> Definitely wasn't going fast enough. Uh, yeah. So, you yourself, Chenmere, are brought back into the guard outpost and up towards the uh, captain's uh, office area. Uh, there's no one else in here. Uh, but on the way up, uh, High Captain Arnold tells one of the guards to go get the executor and that the executor will know what's up, basically. The executive over no is what he said. Brought back up uh, to the uh, captain's office area. Some moments pass, and then familiar, sort of familiar executor, familiar crystalline, wiry uh, gadgets, so to speak. And then same deal as before. He doesn't even say anything this time. He just comes up and holds out his hand when he's standing in front of you. Yes. Right there. Yeah. High five. <laughs> no. Well, he, he grasps. He has to grasp it. Yep, yep. And then he channels your powers back into you. I will say, out of game, different from Chetamir to Carries. It's not like the world regains color for you. It, you never really have as, like, as mm, dismal an effect hmm. when you lost your powers. Uh, being said, like when you get them back, it does feel nice, and the world also feels a bit colder, just slightly, which is oddly homey. So you know, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. If nothing else, adventurer, you may take your leave. Do you take your leave? <laughs> Oh, sorry, no, I I realized I was fucking muted, damn it. Uh, was it just, uh, is it just her and him? Her, Chetamir, High Captain Arnold, two guards holding the energy crystal, and the executor. Okay, she does have, like, a little message. <laughs> just. I mean, I wouldn't try casting magic message. No, I'm not I'm... gonna fucking cast message. I mean, she's literally gonna talk to him. Just, okay. uh... You trust us about as much as you could throw us. As far as you could throw us. Fuck words. Um, but genuinely, if things had gone differently, I probably would have wanted to help you with this in the first place without needing the threats. So, in the future, if you need us again, try and find us. <laughs> and how would I go about doing so, Adventurer? He says, like, slightly sarcastically, but at the same time, slightly intrigued. Um, what does Noxalus translate to again, guys? Because <laughs> I'm not going to say the I Nepos don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh, the Night Watchers, I believe? Yeah, Watchers of the Night. Watchers of the Night, thank you. Who watches the Night Watchers? Da -da -da. Oh, hey, Watchmen. Um, the Void. Uh, <laughs> our group tends to go by the Watchers of the Night. He raises an eyebrow at this and gets a smirk on his face. Yeah, I know. Kind of a stupid name. <laughs> There's a reason. I was... It's a long story, and you probably just mm. don't care. <laughs> true and true. Yeah. Very well, Watcher of the Night. If I'm ever in need of peculiar services again, I'll look into it. Also, I am Chetamira Froststone if you want to look for someone specific. It's a bit easier to find. One person versus a group might be easier to find. With a stupid name like that? Yeah, probably. 
<laughs> Be on your way, Chetamere Frosting. And she is. And don't cast any more magic in my town. Gotcha. And she goes back to the wagon and... Yeah. <clears throat> yep. You guys are all just sort of chilling out there. Eventually, the wary guard of the bird comes back, sands the bird, and the female guard comes back, sands the arrows. And then eventually, Chetamir comes back. Chetamir, you good? You might be muted again. Sorry, the second something happened, someone walks in my room. What happened? You good? That's all Drake. I'm much better. Alright, let's get out of here. I'm sure they've had enough of us. Absolutely. <laughs> so, I imagine you guys are heading to the hotel because it's literally like a five minute thing that will trip that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect! Oh my god, that actually is so relevant. Why is that? There's Russian text, is that, in the back? Wait, no, it just says USA. Here lies Kevin, a noble bird of many flights, but October 1st it was his last. <laughs> oh wait, October 1st, 2018, it happened like a week ago. That's hilarious. That's, weird. That's so perfect. That's so relevant. How did That's you disgusting. How'd you find that? Guys, are we warping reality itself? <laughs> yes! Need to have on Facebook. Yes! My plan is working! Nope. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you guys head back to the hotel? It's Indeed. night now. Or it's yeah. like the early dregs of night. You guys go back to the hotel? Give your wagon off to one of the, uh, ballet. That's a word, ballet. I was like, hitcher? I'm like, no, no, not a hitcher. Valet, boy, people, I don't know. A fucker's name. Valet, man. That's a really shit superhero. And then, uh, you guys enter, and you guys see, uh, a familiar lady. Your kind and gentle innkeeper. I'm not sure if you guys ever actually learned her name. Nope. <laughs> Definitely not. We have not learned her name. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> Hi, Barbara. No. <laughs> yeah, so you see her, and you know, she's, you know, as she normally is when you guys see her, doing some stuff on some papers, like sort of sifting things out, and then you guys enter, and she looks up, and looks down at her papers again, and then like, she's like, wait a second, and then she looks up, and she gets a smile on her face. Welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be back. And as not wanted individuals. It's better to be back. <laughs> Thanks for the cover on that the other day. I have no clue what you're talking about. Yeah, true. <laughs> also, what? I'm now realizing that we kind of gave you some shit. What's her name? Because we never even bothered to get that. <laughs> she looks at a Noah pass like over your shoulder and her smirk wires. Or at least something it. we can call you by. Anna. All right. <laughs> I am Her name is Anastasia. I know it was for his interior. <laughs> How do you know fucking ever? You know what? I shouldn't be surprised. Never mind. <laughs> I've been here before, dear. Yeah, I know, but like, still. Anastasia is, I have honestly believed, a fairy amongst people. And Anna just bows her head at that, humbly. That is mighty impressive. It's not so hard. You just need to get into the right mindset. And she, like, stacks and, like, <laughs> like, stack papers. Now, I believe you have some people to talk to on the top floor. That is a safe assumption. Your rooms are still there. Other than the beds and things like that, nothing else has been tended to. In case that you left some sort of anything in the rooms. Not that I would or wouldn't know. Enjoy your night. Thank you, Anastasia. The bar is always open as well, remember. 
That is a very tempting offer. <laughs> Anyways, going so, upstairs. <laughs> so, you guys go upstairs. Is there an <laughs> elevator? <laughs> yes, there's elevators in this there could be a medieval, medieval world. They're trying to make it. A magic a elevator in this magic hating province. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> It's I mean, magic. every door we go through has hydraulics, so you never know. Fair enough. There's a bunch of slave boys in the basement that pull you up. <laughs> That's true. Welcome to the exchange. Uh, anyways. So you guys go up to the top floor of this place. And the doors to your left and right to your respective rooms are all closed, and the conference room double doors at the end of the hall is also closed. Oh. Probably in the end hall. Let's just go down there first. If they're in the room, they'll probably pop out or something. So, you guys walk your way down the long hall. And do you just open the door or do you knock? I don't know what you do. Just fucking open it. <laughs> uh, should I make my dexterity save as well? <laughs> oh no, Cedric's gonna shoot me in the face. Uh... I want... Yeah, I'm gonna do this. Because I have my shield. No, it's gonna be either your AC or your the number you're rolling Ugh, right My AC is 21. Okay, right, so yeah, it'll just take the higher one. I don't know. Let me just... Uh, so out. how much damage am I taking from Cedric? Because I, I don't know. fucking Let's forgot there's assassins in the room. I have to redo these sheets, but the damage should still be good. <laughs> it should still be nice and good. Yeah, I think I hit. <laughs> yeah. Plus 18, I love it. Yeah. Fuck, that almost hits my AC if I don't have a shield. Almost. Just the modifier. He yeah, has like a lot of shit. <laughs> He's like a level 18, 20 rogue, whatever. Fuck it. Take 20 points of damage. Uh, I'm at 4, no, 39. As you get slammed in the chest by an arrow. <laughs> That just shot through the tiny crack that you just began opening the door with. I think she's literally knock knock. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and the door I'm fine. Up more from the inside, and you see it's Valeska, you know, red hair and everything. I forgot how much you trigger finger you have. Cedric! <laughs> you now see, you lean up on your, like, to see, like, into the room, and then you see Cedric like shrugging, like like Reaper shrug from Overwatch, like, <laughs> like what whatever. do you expect? Yeah, he's like whatever, and, but like one of his hands is his bow. Oh my goodness, I'm fine. She holds out a hand, and tries to help you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Someday, Chedamir will teach you how to knock. Look, I wanted a dramatic entrance, and I forgot there was an assassin with an itchy trigger finger on the other side of the door. Okay, hold still. <laughs> Ow. Honestly, that's probably happened a few times. Not, like, to that extent, but she's probably been stuck in the shoulder yeah, with an arrow. Yeah, yeah she, you've been hit by arrows before. Sometimes by friendly fire. Yeah. Uh, so she pulls out the arrow. God's above. Welcome back, I suppose. Look, I'm not even mad. I should have probably figured that one. And she just goes and sits down whatever, like, the first fucking chair is. Yeah. So, in the room is uh, basically everyone. Uh, Cedric, Velasco standing at the door for you, Connor at the far end as the father figure he is, I don't know. And Nevi and Owen sitting next to each other. Precious. And it seems they're playing some sort of game right now. Some sort of like board game. They're playing Monopoly and Owen is winning. It's 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 a, <laughs> something a bit equivalent. It's like Chess exists in the world, but this is like a different style. It's not a different style of chess, but it's like a variant branch off of chess. It's like an actual like strategic game. It's like go. Sure, I don't know if that. Yes, uh, actually I know go. It's it's an it's a very weird game. It's like it's usually played by like nobles and stuff that have a lot of free time in their hands. It's a game in which you get randomly you set sort of the rules between you and your opponent of how random it could be, and then you get randomly dealt amount of forces. And then the point of it is to either win or minimize losses. There's not really a way to win when you minimize losses, but it's more a matter of 
It's a strategic. It's a tra yeah, tradition's game. That sounds like it would be really fun if it was real. I tried making rules for it, but I was I got lazy. No. But yeah, it's a it's a it's an actual game that exists in the world, and it, but again, it takes it can be as complicated or as simple as you want it to be. But the thing, but by default, even when you try to make it quick, it's still pretty long. It's like a game of civilization. Don't ever play civilization if you have hours to waste. And you can see that you know they just sort of just started. But yeah, they're just in their plane. Connor He's remarks from him. across the room. <laughs> Welcome back. Hi. Oh yeah, my my apologies. I forgot one very important person. Nikolai Jean is there. Yeah, that's kind of important. And he's sort of just sitting, he's sitting on the table cross-legged, like, so, I would have never seen next to each other, but obviously there's no, like, table in between them, so they play on the table off to the side. And then across, like, they make this sort of triangle is Nikolai John sitting on the table cross-legged, like a, like, a schoolboy. What the? Yeah. <laughs> da 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 They get back. What's up? Sans one bird. So I've been told by my own little birds. What? He has a wide, happy smile on his face. Surprisingly, it lived, considering we almost drowned it. Wait, we did drown it. I was about to say, pretty sure you actually literally did drown it. It lived. Hey, your potions work, at least. Yeah. Speaking of which, and she just, like, downs, like, three of them. They're walking at the door, or... Hmm? Okay, good to know. No, I didn't hear what you said, genuinely. Who else? What? Hey. Does anyone enter the room? Oh yeah, no, uh, Shedemir is sitting at the table at this point. And like, just yeah. drinking her fucking potions. I'm gonna yeah, inside. Sure. <laughs> Nevi pulls out a syringe and... <laughs> heals you. How much getting better. Heal? Well, it's just for narrative sake, just say you go to full. Okay, cool. Uh, hers combined with mine. Yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> so, what happened? Aldrich, you got a copy of that paper. <laughs> copy the report. Uh, I did not copy my report, no. You're never gonna be a bureaucrat if you have that sort of attitude. Triplicate Thank things. Always Thank triplicate. Thank the gods. <laughs> <laughs> And he sort of like wiggles his butt and sort of sort of face Connor. You see now why I don't stay at the Maestros, huh? Do you see now why I don't stay at the Maestros? Ah, good minds think alike. Oh God, I hope not. How? Connor being a pr absolute twat aside, what happened? You see, Connor wants to say something, but he stops himself. We found the settlement and a bunch of dead guards. And some creepy magic. And meta fey, uh, arch fey? No, uh, yes? I don't know, Laura's a weird oh, situation. Okay. Also, we met oh. Danny. And a winter night, and I think I saw the shadow man, but we met him too, and we killed some ghosts. What, what's the last thing we, we informed you of? I mean, the last thing we knew about was when you left. So... Basically nothing. Basically nothing. Four outposts, all... Yeah, you gave you gave me the details about that. Desecrated but... by the Shadow Man, who is apparently the same person Seam has been looking for. You raise an eyebrow at this. Uh, Mesikala. Ooh! <laughs> I'm gonna get so much popcorn. Does popcorn exist in this I was universe? about to say... Of course it exists, voices in my head, crazy. of course it exists. <laughs> what is Popcorn? I believe his name is Scorpio, correct me if I'm wrong, Simo. Correct. Don't say I'm familiar with the guy. It's also so you're familiar that... with the Shadow Man. <laughs> the stories. Oh Make me roll fucking carnage. <sighs> Everyone rolls history. <laughs> It's not, it's not history is a thing. Whatever you wanna roll. 
I don't fucking roll for I, cheese. I guess background information. I mean, I think that's what we wrote. Yeah, yeah. but Connor's background is weird because he didn't have a childhood. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess he did. Yeah, but it was full of wolves and pointy things. I think I've heard the term before, but perhaps you know something I don't. Inform me. Uh, supposedly, he um, is an architect of strife. He, uh, I can't recall the exact details, but he orchestrated an attack. Um, between Nevro's forces and uh, if you guys wanted to skip past literally <laughs> fast forward telling me what something I as a GM already know that's fine and so <laughs> we tell him <laughs> yeah you tell him if you this is on to you if you add any particular lines or if you take away any information from what happened if not then I'll just assume Connor knows basically like all the major details and everyone in the room as well when they'll just know the major details of what happened sure that's fair Okay. Now I need to roll something for Cedric. Flashbacks. No, I mean he ha he has his. I told you they had arcs in their campaign for like, mm. each of them, and his star arc was a significant amount of PTSD. Wonderful. Don't totally don't relate to that at least slightly. <sighs> that was the DC. Nice. Ooh. I'm sorry. Hold on. You guys fought stuff, right? They exploded. Yes. How do you guys feel? Exhausted at first. Still I'm exhausted. Like an hour. Hmm? I was temporarily paralyzed. <laughs> Blind, no, no, no. deaf, tired. Hmm. Even now. A bit. Mm. No. He squints his eyes and looks at you really intently. Lord Aurelius, is there not I've never seen many things trouble you, this is an L speaking. Is something wrong? I'd like to know for my own and she looks at you, Chamber, personal interests. Well that's only slightly more concerning than normal. Anoa, yes. Servant of mine, do a check on them. Now. And she gets like a confused look on her face, but she does so. She just sort of looks you guys all up and down. Like, just from where she's standing, and then she flicks her finger on the doors to the conference room, <laughs> close, and then she begins casting something. And then her eyes change back to a fairy's, you know, the feline eyes. And then her, the, cause you know how a cat's eyes look, you know, they have sort of like slits. <laughs> the edges of the slits of her eyes begin glowing purple. So this purple and gold combo she has in her eyes right now. I do not know what you're doing, but I do not want that that done to me. They seem fine, Lord Aurelius. You squint really fucking hard. But he didn't say anything. He just leans back in his chair and just sort of waves his hand like, like, whatever. Is something the matter? I'm wondering if you guys have been marked. Just like me. Can you get that from just an encounter with shadowy beings? Potentially. Well, what about from being in a circle of weird magic runes? Definitely. Yeah, that could be a problem. You have a weird dream with a weird Pair that with weird a dream. weird dream. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Is that a throw Cedric off? Dark place, green eyes. How many had a weird dream the other night? Raise your hand. 
I raised Says Chetimer. <laughs> Chetimer also raised her hand. Yeah, raise his hand. Dap. Dap. <laughs> so you all just raise your hands? Pretty much. You've definitely been marked then. Unless you guys just have this magical pattern of having the same dream. I mean, this what? is technically the second time. Yeah, also, second. bear in mind that the last outpost we cleaned out, um, it had a scene depicting something we were involved in. So, stands to reason. He looks at Connor. We need to go itself now. Consider it fucking done then. That being said, no point shopping the night. Fair I'm enough. Sure about that one. <clears throat> if you want to travel in the night, Shadow I'm game. I don't personally give a fuck. I can handle myself. And with these two traveling with us, and he gestures to Valeska and Cedric. Cedric, arms crossed, and Valeska just does a little twiddly wave at you guys. I'm definitely not fucking afraid. I'd be fine with just going. If if this is important to him to get south, then that's very important to me. What about the rest of you? I was simply helping get her powers back. By the way, really thank noble. you. I am happy to leave this place and never come back. The sooner the better. Actually, he goes up to Connor. Goes up to Marshall. Well, hmm. Do you have any particular place you're going, Marshall? Well, I was going up north because I heard there was a great master fighter up there. But <laughs> he raises an eyebrow. <laughs> he looks at Cedric. How north? All the way north. He breaks out his eyes a couple of times. <clears throat> that being said, you might be marked as well. And it, if it's something concerning for him, and he throws a slam at Cedric, it's definitely something serious. So, you can go north any time, but would you mind traveling with us? I consider it uh, an honor. Well, I suppose I'll get wherever I'm going when I get there. And if it's something that could come as a harm to Tala, then it's better taken care of. If your story is accurate, I think every single one of you is marked. So you don't want to let it fester. And he throws a thumb at his back. Timmy just rubs the back of her neck absentmindedly. Yeah, I think, I think this they said work so many times. I'm actually just looking around like. I heard Chetamir and then Discord crash on me. Oh, she just rubs the back of her neck absentmindedly. Yeah, I think they said marked so many times. Like Marshall's actually just looking on him. Like it's uh, not. Let's roll me now. You're, oh, roll me your perception with advantage. Uh, him. Him. Anyone else okay. to examine themselves? You don't say anything, Marshall. You're fit, fine. Must be something out of your realm of expertise that they're referring to. Alright, well... 19? Eh. No, you're fine. Magic's uh, not your field of expertise either, so yeah, at this point you want to trust, but... trust the magically... I mean, it's not just on magic, you can tell, but it's, it's clear that he has experience with being marked by beings from the void. Well, Shedmir has experience with being marked by fairies, but at the same yeah. time, it's fine. Uh, with advantage, Darren. Um, even if I have the disadvantage from exhaustion, cancelling it out. Oh, yeah, that'd be fine. Though. Great. But I yeah. do have the added advantage of my shield, so. In technicality, this campaign we don't do double advantage or triple yeah. advantage and stuff like that. But that means I don't give a fuck. Just roll it anyway. Okay. I'll roll it again, <laughs> Yolo. My rulings are flimsy, yeah, especially yeah. when I'm getting my Asian glove. Oh, you know, that's that the helped D me out a little bit. That's <laughs> the DC. Damn son. But hey. You notice that. Upon your shoulder, 
like just right there on the little corner of it, there's a black speck. That's and you initially, at initial glance, it's like it's a mole or a birthmark. And it sort of messes with you as you look at it. Like it's sort of like you feel like you feel like you shouldn't be looking at it, but you're sort of forcing yourself to look at it. Kind of like the TARDIS from Doctor Who. Something like that, yeah. Like or I guess in, in, this has happened to Seema actually probably not a significant amount, maybe like once or twice. But so as I told you guys when when this campaign started, Celestial is maddening to hear, to read, because it's literally every language existing simultaneously in perfect unison. So you're, the mortal mind just sort of ekes away from it because it knows it can't handle 